convene this meeting because I believe that the review is limited as it stands now. And in order for the environmental impact assessment to be effective, it needs to consider a number of other alternatives um, in order to provide a larger scope for the project impacts, both positive and negative. The draft environmental impact assessment, as it stands now, only considers the number of turbines, the location of the turbines, and a very limited no-build option. This alternatives analysis fails to create a clear vision of the situational context of the project. In this presentation, I will be discussing ways in which we can revise the environmental impact assessment so that it better evaluates all alternatives, and I'll provide arguments for why it is necessary to spend the time and money to do so. First, we need to define the goal of the project if we are to effectively evaluate alternative approaches. Alternatives analysis should paint a picture of the multitude of options um, available to reach this goal. So I believe that the goal of the project is to provide energy for the growing electricity demand in the region. Um, and studies have shown that new energy facilities will need to be built um, within the next 15 years to meet this growing demand. Um, so we should use this goal to frame the project um, evaluation. Um, and setting a clear goal at the beginning um, helps to consider better alternatives. And it will, it's necessary to take a step back and to see the project and its impacts in the larger context. So if we all agree that, this, um, that the goal is to meet the growing electricity demand, we must determine if this project is the best option and the environmental impact assessment is the way that we'll do that. So to, to, um, to do this, we need to make three major revisions to the environmental impact assessment. One, we need to consider alternative forms of energy production and their environmental, economic, and social impacts. Um, if this plant is not to be built. So if we, if we do not build offshore wind, will we build wind um, farms on land? And what will the land use impacts of that be? Will we need to build a natural gas plant to meet demand? Or is, like, is solar an option? So we need to really consider the greater alternatives. Um, it will be difficult to do a full environmental impact assessment of all of these theoretical alternatives. We can pick a few items to focus on, for instance, carbon emissions or land use. Second, we need to consider um, the impacts of wildlife and coastal communities um, based on cumulative impacts if this project isn't built and other um, clean energy projects are not built and we're not meeting our greenhouse gas, gas emission targets. Third, um, if, if this project is um, perhaps the best way to meet our energy needs, then we need to consider alternative ways to mitigate the impacts from this project on wildlife and navigation. So mitigation efforts could include um, moving the wind farm further offshore or presenting, uh, providing better long-term monitoring. So um, including all of these alternatives in a more comprehensive alternatives analysis will lead to two major benefits. One, it will increase the opportunity for public buy-in by making a more transparent process. Um, this is really important for complex problems like energy um, development. And by including more comprehensive analysis, or alternatives analysis, the project will be less likely to be fought later on um, because the public will be better able to use this document um, to see the decision-making process. Um, the public will see that the environmental impact assessment did not just consider the impacts of the proposed pre-designed project that was already going to happen, but, but will see it in a greater context of um, the different alternatives that were considered along the way. This will, while spending this money up front, um, it will be expensive to do all of these extra studies. It will be important in saving money down the pipeline um, if, in delays and litigation. And second, because there is not much precedent for environmental impact assessments of offshore wind in the United States, um, we have the opportunity to set the standards for evaluation. Um, this project will set best practices, so let's make them best practices and establish mitigation and monitoring practices, um, as well as the robust alternatives analysis that I proposed. Again, we should, um, we should be sure to engage the public around this alternatives analysis during the review of this draft, uh, the comments on this draft environmental impact assessment, um, so that there's public buy-in uh, and support of the project and, and that the public understands what alternative options would look like. Um, so finally, we need to recognize that internally as the EPA that <laughs> environmental impact assessments are not unbiased and purely scientific. 
um, but that, that they operate within a political framework. So because of this, and um, because of our recent decision to limit greenhouse gas emissions and power plants, we need to create a better framework for analyzing alternative energy projects um, and present um, a better framework for analyzing all of those impacts and risks. Um, we cannot encourage clean energy development at a great cost to local ecosystems, but we must create a system in which a sound case for wind generation can be made, including, um, and so this, by doing this, we need to examine, uh, have an assessment that examines all other options, including um, energy, meeting energy needs from less clean sources. So for these reasons, I recommend revising the, the draft environmental impact assessment to include these comments. Thank you.